monkey magic. There's lots of stories about monkeys. The first cow zine was a cowpox cow zine injected to stop smallpox. So the first cow zine had cowpox in it. We now have this monkey magic in the media. Is what people have taken the cow scene responsible for the monkey magic? And look at the irony of it that the first cow zine to cure smallpox had cowpox. So the first cow zine was a pox. And now we have the monkey magic. We're going to have a look at monkey symbolism. Here we have the TV show Monkey Magic. Notice that magic is another word for alchemy. In the world before monkey, final chaos reigned. Heaven sought order, but the phoenix can fly only when its feathers are grown. The four worlds formed again and yet again, as endless eons wheeled and passed. Time and the pure essences of heaven, the moisture of the earth, the powers of the sun and the moon, all worked upon a certain rock old as creation. And it became magically fertile. That first egg was named Thought. Tathagata Buddha, the father Buddha, said, With our thoughts we make the world. Elemental forces caused the egg to hatch. From it then came a stone monkey. The nature of monkey was irrepressible. So that is the introduction of monkey magic, which was filmed in Japan, but it's about China and Buddhism. And you see there how creation, how they believe that creation comes from thought. Thought is the crown, the crown chakra, which is the seventh chakra. So, thought creates reality. Notice that in Monkey Magic, which I believe everything you see in the media is all predictive programming, that you have a character that is androgynous, who, rep who represents higher thought. So the character which represents highest, the highest thought in Monkey Magic is an androgynous character. If we look at the character Monkey, Monkey is given the gift of a magical staff, staff from a dragon king and is given the task of guarding the peach garden of immortality but he eats the peaches and becomes immortal and that's why he's buried under the mountain that story is very similar to the story of Prometheus and of the Greek Titans it is also similar to Lucifer and Satan who are who Lucifer is the immortal angel but he is he is imprisoned in another dimension. And this seems to be the agenda. To free Lucifer in this new age. And so Monkey himself in that, in that film represents alchemy and immortality. And this is the great narrative of history. Where you have the Egyptians who used to mummify themselves as they saw themselves that they would be reincarnated in the future. With DNA that is possible. So we have the monkey character. The monkey character in Western painting, in Dutch painting, represents evil 
and it represents the devil. In this painting by Jean Venix, we have the carnal fruits at the base of the painting. We have the all-seeing eyes on the peacock. Here, we have the all-seeing eye on the peacock. The painting is composed as a pyramid. We have the monkey. The monkey represents sin and it is representative of the devil. Mischief. And we see that in order to get to the top of the pyramid we have to leave behind the carnal pleasures of the material world and you will have the temptation of the monkey. You have here towards the top of the pyramid you have a satyr which looks like a baphomet. So as above so below and at the highest level you have a phoenix. So in this painting by Jean Venix, who was a painter of the 17th century, a Dutch painter, you have what is a pyramid and it shows you how you rise through the chakras to the crown, to the phoenix, to immortality. Jan Wienix, you can see his paintings in the Wallace collection. They are very mysterious paintings. In the background of his paintings, you always have what looks like the Golden Age. So, the Golden Age which has passed. Is what they think is that to get back to the Golden Age, we have to destroy this age in order to create the New Age. And this is why you have the golden age in the background of this painting and you have the pyramid. You have the carnal aspect of material reality. You have the trickster, which is the monkey, which represents the devil. You have the Baphomet, as above, so below. And at the top you have Lucifer the Phoenix, the immortality. And today, in today's world, we have transhumanism. That is the artist Jean Phoenix. You also have this painting by him, which shows a dog. So the dog stares out, of, out at us. He's just collected some game, some dead game. It is. It has an apocalyptic aspect to it. The painting and the. The stare of the dog is incredible. And you have these rabbits, these hares, hares and animals, and they look like crucifixions. And you have the golden age in the background. It has an apocalyptic aspect to it. And you have the, the dog which stares out at us. Are these paintings saying that the, the plan of these secret societies is to get back to the Golden Age, the Age of Saturn? And to do that, they have to destroy this age in order to create the New Age. Is this their plan? You have the painter Hieronymus Bosch. Now, Hieronymus Bosch painted this painting, The Garden of Earthly Delights, and it seems to show the Garden of Eden and the Apocalypse. Now, Hieronymus Bosch was part of a cult which believed that in order to get back to the Golden Age, we have to recreate the Apocalypse to get back to the Golden Age. That is how humanity will get back to the Golden Age, by creating an apocalypse and going through the apocalypse and so this painting can be read backwards that to get to that higher state of thought 
we have to destroy this world to get back to the immortality of the Garden of Eden. You have Planet of the Apes where you have the simian bug. And so all these things are predictive programming. Notice that in the Planet of the Apes, in the first movie, you have the Statue of Liberty head on the beach. This is another reference and predictive programming about the wave, the tsunami that will hit America. All this is done by design. And what I say in my videos, I believe will come true. It's just, and we're in that timeline now where they want to try and destroy this age to create a new age. And they've been showing this through predictive programming all our lives. Thank you.